Hello guys, here we are with another lesson about the Pete's defense and this time we're going to I'm going to show you a game guys where the white pieces choose to play g4 in this position and I think this is called the spike variation and I wanted to show you a game where one of the best Pierce defense players handles the, the spike variation and that's going to be Yasser and I know that a lot of you guys are familiar with his, his lessons, he's a great player and a great teacher. Here we're going to take a look at one of his games that I have had in my files for a long time and I actually had it as reference for whenever I had to deal with this variation. Now this game guys you can find it here in our last lesson we talked about this website so this is chessgames.com and here you can see that this game he's playing uh, I think it says even the year yeah 1980 you can see his opponent as well so if you ever need to find this game that's how you find it okay so I'm going to take it to Lee Chess and by the way guys those of you who are new to this website just like myself uh, just know that if you ever need to bring the game over to export the game down here it's giving you the option to get the PGN so you could view download so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this and I'm going to paste it here on let me see on the chest import and now we have the entire game over here and let's take a look guys now before we start let me show you this position in front of you and I want you to take a look and just think if you were playing this game and you see for the first time this move pawn to g4 what would you do next and also take a look at this other position where I want to see if you can find the plan that Yasser implemented in this position. And this is the plan that he started from this moment on is the reason why I, when I saw this game many years ago, I kept it and I used it as reference because I thought it was very cool and it was an idea worth keeping and maybe we could use it in other games. So anyways, we're going to start with the game, guys. The first move was pawn to d4. Notice how even though it was the Peter's defense, they started with d4. We have talked so many times that if they play d4 and we use the same uh, setup, it is the King's Indian defense. However, look at what Yasser did at this point. He went pawn to g6. If you have been following my lessons on the King's Indian defense, I have always told you that even though I play the King's Indian defense, I start with g6. Why? Well, if I do knight f6, they could do bishop g5. And there's nothing, not a big deal about that, but I just don't like it. And if you don't like that bishop g5 move, and then if this g6 they take, you take. If you don't like the double pawns, well, you could do what Yasu did, what I have been recommending, which is pawn to g6. And now let's say they just go knight f3, knight f6, and they go bishop g5. Now, I don't really mind it because my bishop is on time to come to g7. But anyways, in this game, after d4, g6, the white pieces did e4, and now it sort of transposes. It's the same thing as e4 first and then d4. So this is a king's pawn opening. So after e4 we have d6. Notice how Yasser is also sort of getting into his peers. And after knight to c3 we have bishop to g7. Guys, this is still looking more like a modern defense than the peers, right? Because in the peers we do knight f6 first and then bishop g7. But like we have said before, this is the beauty of this opening. It is so flexible. You could transpose into the king's Indian defense, into the peers, and even sometimes I've seen people transpose into the Sicilian with, with some C5s. But anyways, after bishop to g7, we have bishop e2, and then this is the first moment that I wanted to take a pause. Guys, whenever I'm playing my games and I see that my opponent does something that is unusual, like typically here we see knight f3, that's a classical, we see bishop e3 if they want to play more aggressively, or even the Austrian attack, which is pretty aggressive as well. Now, if I see bishop e2, this typically comes in within the knight f3 variation but now i'm thinking why don't you just do knight f3 first and then bishop e2 what's the deal with bishop e2 well i know that something weird might be in the horizon and guys i hope that you remember from the many lessons we've had even i think lesson 109 or 10 where i showed you a game where i played uh, i used the pities i saw something weird and i did one move that i always implement when they're doing something that might turn into an aggressive variation so here, they just continue with knight f6 and now g4. Now, a lot of people, guys, especially those of you who are getting started now, you don't have a lot of experience, people freak out when they see these early pushes or they see h4 and they start making silly mistakes. Now, 
we gotta keep it cool and don't forget the move that I always tell you. If you see anything aggressive, if you see the 150 attack, well, you want to insert C6. This is a very flexible move in the piece. It is going to help us, among many other things, to expand on the queen side. Because remember, if they push this pawn to g4, it is very unlikely that they're going to castle there. So we gotta be ready for when they go to the queen side. And that's what this expansion is doing for us. So anyways, after g4, we have pawn to c6, we cannot forget this move. And then we got pawn to g5. No big deal. Now we have to move the knight, but don't forget this pawn, even though it looks so aggressive, it is pretty advanced. The more we advance the pawns, the weaker they become, but also our king is not even compromised yet. We're not castled to the king's side. So we might even not castle, or we could castle to the queen side, like I recommended when we talked about the 150 attack on lesson number 70. So here, if we look at the options that we have, this one is not possible. Here the same thing, here the same thing. And then going back to g8, it just doesn't look good. So we're going to go to d7. And then if you think about it, we are transferring that knight to the queen side where most likely we're going to be expanding there. And if you think this is just a waste of a move, guys, they have been moving the same pawn twice instead of developing pieces, so that's okay. Now, after knight f to d7, h4, again, just like I told you on the 150 attack, a lot of players who use these aggressive approaches, they just have one plan in mind, to push the pawns, open up the king side, put the king in checkmate. But again, our king is not there. And notice how Yasser has been doing what I have been recommending you guys since lesson number 70. Just keep it cool, don't freak out, use your c6 idea, and do not castle so quickly. Because then if we castle, it is pretty easy for any player to just follow through with the plan, okay? So after pawn to h4, then we have pawn to b5. Same thing that we talked about. And sorry guys that I keep repeating the same thing, but we actually talked about this on lesson number 70, even though it is not the same variation. So pawn to h5. And now one thing that we did not talk about back then. Now, back then I told you guys, uh, ignore this, not a big deal, queen a5, or even bishop b7, trying to just castle queen side. Now, here Yasser does a move that it is more sophisticated, it is definitely better than what I recommended, and this is exactly why we are reviewing these games. I gave you a good foundation back then, now the more you review games, the more you're going to learn about the peers, and of course you could do it with any opening you play. So here, Yasser did rook to g8, and this is an idea for you guys to keep in your database, keep it at the back of your head. So whenever you see this h5, you know, uh, taking doesn't look good. This pawn is going to be punished afterwards uh, when they open the h file. Of course, um, h6 is coming. And you know, when I play blitz, I do not mind h6. I just go back and I focus on my queen side. But the truth is on a classical game, uh, rook g8 makes more sense. And basically what we're doing is if they go h6 now, then we hide the bishop. It is still on a very good diagonal and the king's side, it is sealed. The white pieces simply cannot attack us because they're not open lines. So that's the plan here. But after rook g8, the white pieces took and then Yasser took back on h6. And now the white pieces are happy because they got the open file. However, there's not an easy way for them to utilize it and put pressure on it, at least not yet. So at this point, they're finishing development and this is what's happening. They are they were pushing pawns and so on, but they were not ready to follow that up quickly because they were behind with development. So now they gotta get this out, maybe this one out, and only then they could attack, maybe bring the queen over. So after knight f3, we should know guys, we need to, we cannot just stay here quiet waiting to get checkmated. We need to create something. And we know that we have nothing to do on the king's side for now because this is not looking good well, we're going to expand on the queen side. So pawn to b4 is a move that we are more than familiar with. Now the knight has to back up, look, development issues. And now we have pawn to a5. Now notice that Yasser did not do queen a5, like I recommended back then. And again, this is why you gotta review games, because even if I tell you something, I might be completely wrong. So now you're seeing what Yasser did and you could compare, you could use them both and say, you know what? I think I like this a5 better. Queen a5 doesn't make sense to me or I simply like what Yasser did instead of what I recommended back then. So a5 continuing to expand on the queen side and the white pieces went pawn to a4. So they are reacting to it, trying to block the queen side. Now after a4, we got c5. And again, we're trying to 
open up that diagonal our bishop is really powerful there and if they allow us that's another piece that we're gonna have from far away putting pressure on the queen side so after c5 d5 happened they don't like the pressure here and they also don't like us using this diagonal as well so they're gonna try to keep the center as locked as they can in order for them to attack on the flank and in this case the white pieces need the king side so after d5 knight to b6 now we're putting pressure on a4 we might even support a, a c4 move but the white pieces did pawn to c4 so guys the white pieces are just reacting to white's plans and basically the white pieces in these situations they want to keep the queen side locked so that way the black pieces have nothing to do and only then when the queen side is locked they're going to start bringing the queen the rooks all of their pieces to the king side to put pressure there however in this game you're gonna see how uh, the black pieces found a very creative way to use that same file first to penetrate and attack so at this point after pawn to c4 guys notice that we could do b takes c3 and passant but that's not what we want at this point this is the position that i showed you at the very beginning so what did the black pieces do well to me when i first saw this position uh, i was not that experienced and at the beginning it was a little bit shocking but then i got to appreciate this and i kept it in mind I have used it in other, I think I, I showed you guys on lesson number, I want to say maybe 75 or something, I showed you a game where I did something slightly close to this. Now, in this position, again, Yasser wants to use the only file that is open to penetrate an attack. He might be in a better disposition. And if he combines control over the H file with the dark squares that he's controlling, look at that bishop, that's a very good piece right now. If he combines those two elements, he could have a very good attack a very good initiative so what he did in this case was king to d7 now that lesson that i mentioned before what i did was king e7 of course it was not as powerful as nice as this but you can see how reviewing games is going to give you exposure to these ideas that you could use in many other different ways so here king d7 the first thing is of course now the queen and the rook are connected and we're going to claim that open file but one of the main things here is that we cannot just leave the king in the center anytime guys in this case it works because the white pieces locked the center so even if they wanted to open up lines to attack this king they just cannot do it easily so that's why the king is safe here and it's not like we're going to keep it here in the center for a long time the king is going to castle by foot to the queen side so we just move it over and we start attacking the king so all of a sudden the guy who was attacking remember with that uh, spike with g4 h4 g5 all of that he's now the one who's going to be attacked so king goes to d7 and now we have knight b to d2 again trying to catch up with development rook h8 rook g1 so now they do not want to just trade because if they trade guys of course our queen is ready to go down there and they don't even have the rook to control the back rank so what they did was admit that now they have to defend rook to g1 and at least they have the rook there to defend them so now the king again continues to uh, evacuate go to the queen side and at the same time is making d7 available for the knight and of course our bishop is now pretty open to use that diagonal and this is a very important point as well guys there is no rush we know that now we have the h file and a lot of people immediately are like oh you know what i need to attack i need to go after that king well patience we have to understand the white pieces have nothing to create complications so we have time to organize ourselves and get ready don't forget before you penetrate before you break through you gotta make sure that your pieces are ready to back you up and to help so we have again the rook goes to g1 the king goes to c7 and now rook to b1 look at this it might look like this person is uh, wasting time but my bishop is making them uncomfortable so if they want to do something like b3 well they gotta move the rook first and that gives us time so the rook penetrates don't forget if you have an open file rooks are good on open files but only because we could use those files to penetrate into our enemy's territory and if we don't use it is like we don't have it so rook h3 now finally b3 for the white pieces now the queen comes over and we have a battery so all of our pieces are using that file to penetrate so knight f1 bringing pieces to help on the king side and of course opening up the bishop now after knight f1 this knight that is doing nothing we gotta bring it over to help 
and already we're keeping an eye on e5 for that knight to go over and help so bishop e4 everyone now aiming at that e5 the knight goes in and after knight takes bishop takes bishop takes queen takes and all of a sudden that queen that was doing nothing on the eight used the file the diagonal and it is now centralized very powerful queen they are unable to kick it out with a knight now guys another thing that i have been mentioning i think we talked about it on lesson number 91 and many other lessons is that whenever and i know this it, this was not the main thing here but whenever we are missing one of the bishops the queen typically wants to be on those squares that way we replace the bishop with the queen so this bishop is left so we have someone to control the light squares we don't have the dark squares bishop the queen should be looking for a way to supplement that so after queen 2 queen 5 we got f3 defending the e4 pawn and at this point guys i would like to know what you do next you get to this position you know that you are better but any silly mistake any inaccuracy could make you lose the game or even just lose the attacking chances and get a draw if anything well if you pause the video and you took your time to analyze this position to look at candidate moves and so on i hope that you looked at some uh, aggressive moves some checks and so on but then you said you know what let me just finish development and develop the bishop to bring the other rook i hope that you considered that as well because again we do not want to get ahead of ourselves we gotta say you know what does he have anything any counterplay no well we have time to get ready for this if you start attacking then you soon you're going to find out that you don't have enough pieces to finish them off okay so at this point we have bishop d7 not a big deal with this bishop it's just that the other rook needs to come over to help maybe to the h file maybe somewhere else so after bishop d7 we have queen goes to c2 and now the queen goes into d4 so that queen continues to utilize the dark squares and put pressure on it notice how all of the white pawns are on light squares guys except for the g5 pawn so that means that in contrast they are controlling light squares and in contrast the dark squares are weak they also don't have the dark square bishop only the, the light square bishop so all of the dark squares is what we are using to put pressure to attack and of course it's nice that we came here by hitting that that rook so queen d4 of course the rook goes to g uh, to g2 and now that the rook left the back rank we're going to go down there this is definitely nice notice how this king has nowhere to go and now we're even beating that knight so we're getting closer we're putting more pressure little by little but we cannot make any silly mistakes we should not trade pieces if it is not completely necessary the more pieces whenever we're attacking the more pieces we have left the better it is now we have rook to f2 and now look at this very nice move queen to h8 now the queen is looking for a new way to come over and attack so the queen already did what he had to do here in the center we're looking for a new diagonal so again um, queen a shade was played now pawn to f4 and the queen gets to h4 we're pinning that queen again this king since they were attacking from the very beginning they never castled the king stayed in the center and now we're putting pressure a lot of pressure rook to the one they bring the, the rook over and now guys look we got to this position where again we know as the black pieces we're better we're putting pressure we spend five ten minutes we cannot see any combinations any easy ways to put more pressure well we have to understand that one of our major pieces is doing nothing on the other side so what if we could bring it over do we have the time or are we being attacked if we do have the time what is the best way to include this piece into the attack well here what the black pieces did was pawn to f6 and the idea is very simple they want to open a new line for that rook to come over and put pressure so we have g takes f6 e takes f6 and all of a sudden with this pawn out of the way the rook is going to find a new way to help so at this point we got e5 and this is just going to help us even more the more pawns are traded in the center the easier it is for our pieces to attack we need lines to attack that king we have talked about how to attack the kings on opposite sides and so on well we know that we talked about pawn storms to remove our opponent's pawns so that our pieces have lines to attack well that's what's happening here with their king in the center and our king is now the more the most secure king because we just move it walking little by little and we put it on c7 so after e5 of course we want to remove pawns so we take they take and now guys forget about taking again look we're ready 
removed these two pawns, so that means we got an open file and there is a pin piece on that file. So rook f8, don't forget, if there is a pin piece, we want to add more pressure to it with the least valuable piece available. In this case, we don't have a pawn, we don't have a bishop. Well, the rook is coming over to put pressure on that rook. And not only is that rook pinned, the knight is pinned as well. So it is very, very uncomfortable. This is getting more and more difficult for the white pieces to defend. So now, of course, it takes the six, it comes with a check. And now this is extremely important, guys. You don't know how many of my students, you don't know how many times myself got in trouble because I gave my opponent an opportunity to create counter play. Now, we have the option to take or hide. Of course, we do not want to get our king out there to be open to checks and things like that. So don't give your opponent any chances. I'm going to move out of the way. There's no check. Now they need to continue to defend. I know that even if you had taken, the, there was no, there's no check, but you don't know what's going to happen in five, 10 moves. So just keep it in mind. I'm attacking. I don't want to give my opponent any chances for a counter play. So king went to b7. Now bishop to d3. They need the queen to help that rook. And after bishop d3, guys, the black pieces did the final move that made the white pieces resign. If you want, take your time and see if you can figure it out. And this is just as important. All of this hard work, all of these maneuvers, they're pointless if we cannot finish the game after, guys. There's a nice tactic out here, but if you cannot figure this out, then you definitely have to go back and train tactics. So what is the move? Well, the king is wide open. We gotta go rook e8. And at this point, they don't have many options. Either they block with the bishop, they block with the queen, or they move out of the way. Of course, moving out of the way, we collect that, that rook with a check. Blocking with the queen, well, we're gonna get the queen for the rook, but then what if they just block with the bishop? Well, if you haven't figured out a very nice tactic that we have here, guys, pause the video and see if you can figure it out. There's so many pieces around that king, there has to be something. Checkmate or a fork or a pin, there has to be something here. And I hope that you took your time and you found it. If you haven't found it again, go back and train one move checkmates, two move checkmates, go back to lesson 115 and continue to practice your ability to visualize. Here we have a very nice sacrifice. Don't forget this rook is pinned, the bishop is pinned. And when we look at our candidate moves, definitely rook takes f1 has to be one of them. When you do that move, the rook cannot take, the bishop cannot take, only the king can take, even though they could just run away, but they lose so much material. Uh, when they take on f1, so rook takes, king takes, then queen h1 is going to be checkmate. And guys, that's how the game ended. Again, uh, this is a game that you could find over here on, let me see if I can go back. Yeah, you could find it here on chessgames.com. And again, to me, when I saw it for the first time, I, I kept it in my notes because I really like that idea of, of course, g4. I already knew that I want to insert c6 and knight f to d7, b5, all of these. You knew already. I knew it when I saw this game. But this rook g8, I think it's something for us to keep in mind. Oh, back here. Uh, yeah, rook g8. Also, if we keep going, then this king d7. To me, ooh, this king d7. To me, this was uh, very nice to see it, especially after the way that he handled the attack and everything else. So guys, I hope that you found this game useful. And if you're not familiar with Yasser yet, just here on YouTube, you can put his name in. You're going to see a lot of nice lectures. And I think he has even talked about uh, the Peter's defense because I know he plays it a lot. I have reviewed so many of his games and learned a lot from them. So there you go. For those days where you review games and you work on your openings, feel free to review his games and let me know if you ever have any questions. Also, guys, let me know in the comments what was the move that you liked the most in this game. With that said, I'll see you next time.